Hello, Justice Curry here. Here's a preview of things to come on this epic two-part series of The Prop Shop. I run it like a point guard. Justice Curry, the trading toy guard. A skeleton, your bones apart and radio blast you from the jump start. King Randor, a bone apart. It don't matter. Get it out, get out of my my store. Ooh, this little cove. I'm guessing up here is the, the costumes. Yeah, all the costumes are all upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is pretty funny. Oh my goodness. Look at these. Oh Lord. Well uh in in the other when we're sitting down and talking, I'll skip it in, not skip it in, but snipe it in, some uh, footage of up there. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But it's mainly just costumes, rows up there. Yeah, down rows. here what we just saw, mostly vintage toys, collectibles. We do professional makeup and stuff like that. And then, you know, a few things that we do. And then upstairs, all costumes. And then the back room is pretty much the workshop where we do, do all the custom commissioned items that we make. Do I, do I have to sign a waiver to go in here? Like, you will not touch anything, yeah. you will not steal anything? Yeah, yeah All so right. cut it right now. Cut it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I kind of went straight down because we've been pretty busy, but... Um, wow. This is where we make everything. Dude, unbelievable. It is still just mind-boggling every time I look in here. You had the Battle Cat Bouncer sitting up there at one time. I did. Yeah. Holy moly, this is so much to take in. Wow. Jeez, oh, Pete. I don't even know where to start. I'm kind of speechless. Well, I'll take the other, let's see. Basically, where it all starts is a sculpture. Here's one that I've been working on. Ooh. He's almost done. i got to tweak him a little bit more. <gasps> Jeez! You made Faker! <laughs> He's like, <laughs> it could be a Faker. It's like He Man! It. What the? F this is like a real He Man! Oh! Yeah, I just wanted I wanted to do something that was true to the action figure because I love the original sculpt of his face. Yeah. Which is right here, basically. I painted his head gray so I could see him. But I found out when I blew it up, all this stuff kind of washed out. It didn't have any detail in the eyes or the teeth or anything like that. So yep. it was just looking off. So I ended up putting some realistic textures and teeth and you know different things Dude. like that. Dude, are you like the only? I've never seen anybody do a cosplay He-Man face. You think you're know, one of I, a kind? You no, know, I don't think there's one that's based on, you know, this here. Yeah, right. More based on the original action figure. But that's the stuff I like, and that's what I like doing. Oh, my gosh. So he'll be like a bust version, display bust. I'll do his chest piece after this when he's molded, and then uh, I'll probably do a, a cheaper mass version of his head, too. Yep, which I definitely put me down. Yeah, I yeah, want. I'll probably do a faker version of it, too. Yeah, that would be perfect. And then some different blown up. You're like professional. This is like on the little things. Yeah, These are a few of little my little favorite little. things. I knew you'd have that name. Oh, <laughs> an alien. Here's the baby turtle sculpt, actually. He's he's still around. So you sculpted this out of clay? Yeah, and then you make the mold. It was a silicone mold, so it didn't destroy that. Right. So you just went kind of sitting around. His little feet are hands are <laughs> right here. So those are all molded separately, and then they go on. So the one we saw earlier in the sewer grate, right. that was that? Yes. Okay. This is pizza base that he sits on here. Yeah. actually cast a real piece of pizza. <laughs> you cast a piece of pizza. So we talked about using my head for your original, which right. weighed, a, you know, a thousand pounds. Yes. And then you got this, this foam base, which is right. way yeah, easier. Yeah, and it, 
like I said, when you're doing a mask version, it doesn't have to be actually sculpted on somebody's head. Gotcha. So if you're doing, like in the movies or something, you're doing prosthetic makeup, then yes, you're going to sculpt it onto their um, life cast. But. So what, what's the next stage? So, you just, I mean... Well, like I said, i got to go through here and do some tweaks and finish up. I was just doing skin texture, and that yep. takes me forever. Basically, to do little pores, what I have to do is lay down this. Where's that tool at? So you lay down this here, a piece of plastic, and then it would go through and basically what? stipple this thing by hand like that. Why do you need to put the, the plastic down? Well, what it does is it kind of it softens the... Um, the clay the tool mark. It. So oh. see if I was just do it like this, see the difference? Yes, it's way... It's more like a hole. Yep, yep. So that's basically what that does. Holy moly. <laughs> All these dots? Yeah, that was... <laughs> no! It's not even done. I'll probably do another layer or two on those and it's wrinkles and all kinds of stuff on there. When you get it to the spot that you're like comfortable mm -hmm. at and go, okay, what would you do next? Uh, it goes into make, making a mold. So this one here, I'll probably do a silicone mold over, which I'll brush a silicone layer over top of that, and then I have to make a mother mold on top of that to hold it all into place. So that's a hard version. So you put a thin layer of silicone. Multiple layers of silicone will be built up on that, yeah. Okay. And you Actually, paint it on? Actually, over here, there's one thing that I'll show you. Okay. These are the turtle busts that I do. So like this is the silicone on the inside of it. I can't take these apart because they're all. So you have silicone and the outside you have something to hold everything together. Oh, so the silicone comes in this Because it's like, rubber. Yep. And so then, on the other side, side of this flimsy. is uh, a fake. It's probably hard to see it. That's all right. I, can, I get but the yeah, gist like, of that what you're doing. It's made out of fiberglass. It's lighter, so it's a little bit easier to work with. But you have, basically have your, your silicone and you have your hard uh, mother mold to hold everything together. And what's that hard stuff made out of? Uh, that one's made out of um, fiberglass, and this one's made out of an ultracal, which is pretty much a um, a sturdy, strong mix between cement and plaster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then what do you do once you have, like, what are you looking for? Do you want this to help you, or is this going to help you make the, which part of yeah, it? Yeah, the inside's what matters. Okay. So, let's look here. so the hard stuff around right, it's just giving it. Here's a Like, this is silicone here. Gotcha. And... If we wanted to make a mold from this, it's floppy. So you need something to hold this into place, which would be oh, what this would be. Oh, that makes sense. So on the original sculpture, you had your silicone. Yep. And you'd make the mother mold on top of that. Put that st stability and to it. And when that cures, you take it all up, and then you have something here. I mean, this is obviously just a one and Then what do you do with, say this is a full negative of a mask? Um, you would take this, you could cast resin in it, you could cast urethane rubber into it. Um, different things like that and that would make whatever your bust or whatever you're looking for. Really? Like this guy here. So that's actually resin. That was a little bit of a flawed pole that I had around. So he's actually hard and that came out of those molds that you saw down there. Oh that came out of one of the molds? Yep. And then so you, now you have this. How do you get from this to a mask? Um, well, let's see, once that would cure, we pull that guy out like that, and then uh, trim everything up, make sure it's all ready to go, and then we paint it. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. And I just paint things over here, it's my paint station, you know, it's a little faster, but... Nice. Oh, got all your different base coats, and wash, and then you got one on the, the chopping block. Yeah, that's a latex version there. Now, if we, were, if we wanted to do a latex mask, oh, then that would have to come straight out of all the ultra film mold, which are these. These are actually these are so big, I had to <laughs> weld off the frame and everything to hold these on because these had to be filled with latex. So these are the parts for the turtle suit. These oh, are the pants. The pants. The torso. Yeah, so these all be ready to come out. So how do you get that out? just pull it out, you powder everything first so it doesn't stick together and then you pull it right out of there. And basically they like these are the hands so you, feet. So that just, just came out. out of something like this. Straight out of those molds. That's those molds cool. over there. Yep. So you pull them out and you get a, a piece of plastic. Yeah, these are trimmed up and getting ready to be patched, little flaws, things like that. Yep. And from there they kind of go into a stage like this one where we're, we have different things sewn on to them. Okay. Like underwear type things? Yeah, different things for Is the, there a turtle penis? Can you specialty? 
Uh, Ask for those? Yeah, actually. <laughs> I know you contacted me a few years ago, but I haven't found, uh, <laughs> You haven't found one big enough for it, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then this is just different stages of painting, or? That just has a wash on it, and then there's a, the nails are painted, so this isn't even close to being painted yet. Not even but close? No. Okay, because what we saw out there when I put it on, right. that's like the final product yes. of you yes. going through. Do you use a uh, paintbrush? Do you use airbrush? A uh, mixture between everything. You know, oh, really? Yeah, we airbrush certain things, and then if there's things that we, I want to look more realistic and not airbrush, then I use a paintbrush or whatever. Yeah. You know, it just depends on you know, what it is. What's, is that a turtle shell back there? Yep. Come on. Look at that. Yeah, so that comes out of that giant mold on the end of the table. Yeah. First of all. So that huge, big yes. mold right there. Inside, how long does that take? So you put the, the latex in that giant right. yeah, mold. Right, you brush that in there, and then it's foam filled, and we put you know straps in there, and Velcro, and different things. So basically, it's like a giant. Oh, bag. man. So you'd put it on like this, yep. and then you just Oh, you got little straps right there. Just buckle, on, yeah. buckle, boom, boom, boom. And you had to go through and freaking into the, oh my goodness. Look yeah, I had to that. figure it all out, right from scratch, I and mean, there's no instructions. Yeah, there. it's not, there's not a YouTube video that says, here's how to do this, you know? Gosh, it's been how long, I mean, you've been out of high school for 18 years now, so you've had that progression, which we'll talk about later. Do you mind if we sit down and have like a little chit chat? And, and then I'll show people while we're talking with his, you know, professional transgression of how he got to this point. I'll do, you know, snippets of showing you other things or slow down some of the, uh, the toys that I brushed over earlier. So can we sit down? Sounds good. All right, cool. All right, we're back. With me in studio is a special guest flown all the way from Argentina, Casey Cardi. Thank you for being here with me. My pleasure. My pleasure, too. All joking aside, you've already seen the introduction of his store, his amazing passion, his hobby that's turned into a profession. So I just want to kind of go behind the scenes even more, tell some of the story, cut in some footage from stuff that we may have missed earlier. So let's, let's start at the simple stuff. We grew up together um, in a small town. We became blood brothers. Uh, we played every single day. And we had that common bond that we didn't know bloom into me right. doing what you do and me doing what I do. So let's uh, let's start at the beginning. We, we talked about the, the head mold that you made of me and what, what lured you to this. Well, I think uh, I'm trying to, the first thing I ever did was a Freddy War, the replicas, which we talked right. about. Right. So as I progressed along the lines of that, then I wanted to get more into being able to do, you know, sculpting and different special effects and things and stuff like that. So, as, as a living? Saying, or was this always in your end goal? Well, this is back when I was in college, so I was still going to college. I went for visual design and um, graphic design, yep. you know, things like that. That's what I went to college for. So this was something that I started dabbling in um, when I was in college. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So you're doing that, dabbling in it, and did it, was there ever like a defining moment of, man, I don't even need a college degree. I can just yeah, do this. Yeah, actually, as... well, after I, I left college um, and I got out, I had a, a brief job for uh, graphic design and that didn't work out. Yeah, they ten years. The place up. That was in Marysville too, so it was just a little little thing. And a little prison stint, ten years. That's when I decided I'm gonna hey I'm gonna get a website and I'm gonna try pursuing this a little bit more. Um, because I would always come home during college and I would make, you know, things on the weekends and yeah. put them on eBay, sh ship them out, sell them, stuff like that. Um, right. So it was always it was always a little bit of an income but it wasn't a full time thing. Yep, yep. So that's when it first started, and it was just a slow thing because nobody knew about my website. Of course. So every single thing I sold on eBay, I'd put on a business card, and just kind of slowly, with word of mouth, and that was great when, uh, that was before social media, so that yeah, was, this is way people before. were on forums, on you know, websites and things like that, so it was just a slow progression of like word of mouth. And, you yep, know. yep. And, and I remember when you had that other house, uh, and you had kind of an operation set up in your basement, and it was the first mm -hmm. time I was like, oh Goodness, yeah. this, is, this is amazing. Because I don't remember an operation set up at your, your parents' house. I mean, in your garage. In the garage. You had the, yeah, yeah so that's right. There yeah, I did, yeah, I went from basements to garage and, you know, different things. I had a good year one year, and I knew that I was able to 
come to a shop and, and actually rent a place out. Um, like early 2000s? Four right here. Yeah, it was, uh, well, let's see, I think I've been here in this place for close to seven years. Okay. And I think the other one was just behind here. It was just strictly a workshop. Um, yep, because it's 2018, in case you're watching, I think 10 years five from years, now. So, you know, so yeah, about 11 years, I think I've, I've had a place. I've had 11 it. years. Yeah. So there was a, a moment where you, like we touched on before, just kind of dabbling, selling a few things here and there, mm -hmm. and you went, you had a good year, and you realized, ooh. Yeah, I, I knew did. that I could, I knew that I had saved up enough money where I was going to be able to survive for a year yeah. with rent, and I figured I'd just go for it and try it out. Of course, because I, I remember you in, in high school, in the art class, and just making these mm -hmm. amazing, amazing things. I think we took art the same year, um, and, and everyone was just like, yeah, yeah I used you always do this for a living. Drawing and yeah. painting and, you know, things like that. And, I have always loved special effects. I mean, I know the Turtles, when that movie came out, I was just going on. Right, I, right. I have pictures of me when I was like eight years old drawing that stuff. And um, Something about the movie Turtles and movie you know, props and movie magic, I've always loved that stuff. Why didn't you, did you ever have a dream to go, hey, I'm going to move to Hollywood. I'm going to be the special effects. I would do. I've, I've always kind of thought of that, but um, with, you know, family and, and things like that and now luckily with the internet yeah I don't have to go to Hollywood to be able to do this stuff and you know not a whole lot of props walking out of this location here in Port Huron right but you know I sell a few here and there and we sell a lot online exactly your audience is worldwide online and yeah, now you've all built up that that reputation mm -hmm. or even on some Facebook groups that I'm, I'm a part of I'll see something you know someone at a, a convention and they're wearing or someone in the backgrounds wearing something that I recognize is your work of art because um, like some of the turtle costumes you know the, the mask I showed up around I don't think anybody is making that high of caliber quality do you know of is there other guys out, out there, there just are a like few you? companies out there that do it I think that we are you know one of the more detailed ones for sure I right. try to put you know every little part you know we have handmade pads and um, I take straight up cowhide and I make all the <laughs> cowhide and, and yeah I fun. strip them all down and um, stain everything and make leather belts out of them and you know real wep weapon replicas and you know, stuff like that so <laughs> remember that one year so you had just made a freddy costume a um a jason costume and we went to that little bar the I leading do. tree yes and i dressed as freddy you were jason uh -huh. we had some girls with us and we entered their costume <laughs> We test. lost. Yeah. We lost. These are professional. Well, they weren't quite professional. It's kind of probably what you saw a few things. They were so. still. They were good. The they bar was than, way up yeah, there. Better than Halloween. And we're in this no backwoods bar costume contest. We had real weapons with us. Like you had an actual machete. Yeah. I had this Freddy glove that could probably pierce skin and kill someone. And the guy that won it. Had like just a cardboard box on his head yeah, that said like some mammogram oh, tester was, yeah. or yeah. something like that. Where it's a local his town face, drunk that <laughs> right? Him. He's falling over. Yeah. I mean, we're on stage and like posing and doing the stuff, and some drunk with a box on his head <laughs> wins. Yeah, we were mad. We're really we, we were pretty mad. And then I've seen you at the the local um, Comic Con, Motor City in Detroit, Motor City Comic Con. Mm -hmm. You brought someone in there wearing your full yeah. uh, Ninja Turtle costume. Yeah, that was kind of an unveil for the newer version that we ended up uh, doing with uh, the some parts and whatnot. There had to be 10,000 pictures taken of that. Every two seconds, people were rushing to you guys and saying, Can I yeah, take a picture? Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, and our buddy Danny LeVay was there, and, yep. and it's like, Two in the afternoon, I'm like, are you drunk? He's like, ah, we're at a Comic Con. Yeah. <laughs> You're having fun. Yeah. And we've had a lot of great memories over the years. Like I mentioned, we were locker partners, and then watching him with his craft go from like garage at his parents making stuff to booming into what you have now. Yeah. And and we're in a, a toy store, like a vintage toy store, and I love toys. And now you have a toy store of your own. So how did this aspect, the toys aspect, come into being? Well, be? like, I, I've always collected, which you know. Yep. I actually, before you, I think I started, you know, getting a big collection of Rome. You used to come down and see it. And stuff. I, I did, and it was kind of yeah. triggering something in me, going, oh, my gosh, yeah. this is freaking sweet. And when you were a kid, you had the giant curio cabinet full of Popeyes. Yeah, like, Popeye was my number one huge thing when I was little. In Star Wars, I remember 
You had, I had some, some Star, Star Wars, Wars stuff. Yeah, though. I didn't really collect that or anything, but I had some Star Wars toys. and I didn't have a whole lot of toys when I was a kid, but a yep. good variety, a few things here and there. Um, of course. But yeah, it was more like I was here, I had the store, and this was all pretty much costume rentals and um, the things that we made. And I, the first thing I brought in was um, I had a huge collection of horror stuff and a lot of the newer things, and I wanted to purge my collection, so I had a little wall set up in here. Um, I think it was on this wall, actually. Mm -hmm. And it did good. I mean, people liked coming in and seeing it, and it was it was more related because it was more geared towards Halloween. Than, Cause yeah. Oh, so then I slowly started expanding on it, and uh, I think it was probably going on two years that I opened it all up, or mostly everything down here is going to be um, vintage toys. Of course. You know, it's just a cool thing. I think a lot of people there's not a really many places around this area at least where you can walk in and just see this kind of um, genre of toys. And, Exactly. Yeah. So that makes sense because you know you're not going to have a lot of people walking in around a costume in July. Right. But you're going to have guys like yeah. us or people that are bringing their kids in. And right. Dad's going to go. Oh my God, son, I remember this. So really, I mean, it's not just a toy store. I'd say it's more of pop, like pop culture. Um, you know, and a lot of it relates to movies. And of course, these are the toys from the movies or TV shows that you like. And, yep. You know, yeah. then that kind of relates to the stuff that I make because a lot of it's based on the things that. We grew up as I like. Of course, yeah, our '80s nostalgia or your. Which is a good market because that's what people are wanting to buy at our age. They want to buy their childhood back and different things like that. So and they have the more disposable income, so they're able to spend mm -hmm. more money because they're getting families, they're getting settled in in their, right. their lives, and going, "Hey, I remember that." And some triggers like me, you know, I just pedal to the metal and start collecting everything. Yeah. Childhood. So I think it's just a cool thing. I mean, really anything in here that's cool that I think is neat that I try to, you know, and maybe a store that I wanted to walk into when I was a little that I would like. So that's kind of what, mm -hmm. this, what I've turned it into. I love it, man. And With the little space that I have. It's huge! I don't know what you... You want more space? It's packed. Oh yeah, I definitely want more space. There's really? a lot more that I would do and lots Where, more I need to bring in. Where do you see yourself in five years to see the job you're going to do? I don't know, <laughs> you know? It'd be nice to get a, a, a bigger place. And, yeah? Yeah. More room for toys, more room for making some yeah toys, and you know have everything all on one floor, the costumes all on one floor, and you know I've always had a big plan on having like a Halloween town type thing, like a haunted house, and, Ooh, and yeah. one stop Halloween place, and people come in because you have an upstairs that's full of costume rentals, right. so I expect you know in October it's mm -hmm. being flooded with yeah. people renting costumes. And yeah, we get a lot of people in here to rent costumes though, because there's nothing in the area like that either. Yeah, you either have your, you know, Halloween City, Halloween USA, and uh, you know, spend sixty bucks on a costume. With us, you can rent you know, a professional quality one for twenty-five, thirty bucks. Jeez, that's awesome. So it's kind of cool. There's just different things. More classic costumes up there than, you know, I'm not going out and buying the hottest thing that's coming out. But it's more, you know, if you want a good decade-related uh, uh, time era costume or something like that. You know, of course. Good. What about, I remember you had a giant and bonnable snowman, like he was way yeah, bigger Bumble, than Bumble. Yeah, Bumble. Bumble. Yeah. Well, whatever, I didn't see it back then. No, I, I sold him, actually. But the, that was, yeah, I made that for a, uh, a float that we were doing in Mary's book. So we would have that, and then we had uh, the Misfit toys and all that stuff. But That's that right, you had, like, the mis the, the toys from the Misfit toys. Yeah, it, just, it was toys. too much. It was just something that sat there for, you know, it was huge. Yes. I remember it was, it was, it was huge. It was animatronic, it's had... You know, move and, and whatnot, but yeah, you yeah, ended up selling them. How did you ship, sell, what? I mean, how did that even It go? was a freight company that came in and shipped it, and I think it went into, uh, where did that go? Um, British Columbia or something like that? I guess so someone it. has in their collection the giant bumble. Yeah, in their living room. <laughs> And they actually did they, they had, take pictures of it and show you? I didn't get a picture back. I was supposed to, but I never got a picture back from them. But they had to totally um, expand their front door to get this thing in there. They collected different uh, movie or not movie props, but like store props, Christmas things, and that's that's what they collect. Awesome. awesome. So yeah, it's somewhere. It's somewhere on display, which I thought was cool. Went to good home. That that's really neat. Mm -hmm. And you didn't expect that. I mean, you made it for a prop. To, right yeah. in a parade yeah and then it, it was just up. something cool i wanted something neat you know that that was a little bit more um something that you would see on the bigger parades of course rather than in a small hometown thing yeah just something neat for people to see how do you pick so 
you've transitioned from primarily horror, and you had a lot of Jason and Michael Myers and, and um, all types of masks related to horror. And then I see some of the stuff blood into Ninja Turtles, uh, He-Man. Like, where does that thought process go on work, what you want to make next or your next? I, I started off and I was I was really into the horror aspect of things. I think Freddy and Jason and stuff like that. I mean, that was that was kind of my passion at the time. Yeah. Um, it kind of follows what I'm into. Okay. For the most part. Yeah. So I, you know, I've done the toy store, and I, like I said, I feel like that goes along with it. So I've been doing things that are more um, geared towards that. Gotcha. Plus the cosplay stuff's exploded. And oh my gosh. Comic conventions have Huge. exploded. Huge. And, Huge. Yeah. Any other things on the horizon as far as characters that you'd like to make or all kinds of stuff. I'd like to do a whole line on just based on kind of like what I was doing with that He Man in there based on the, the old toys that we liked when we were younger. Skeleton. And you have a movie version, you yeah, know, it's Dolph Lundgren. On the, yeah, it's based on that, yeah. So you have that movie Skeletor. Have you ever thought about doing the the toy line? Yeah, Skeletor definitely. Mask? Yeah, that'll probably be the next one I do. So oh. based on that and then uh, People who maybe get into some G.I. Joe or something like that. Or, yeah. You know, I don't know. Who knows? I just got a Snake Eyes costume, by the way. Some guy oh, really? was, was like, hey, do you want this? And I'm like, yeah. yeah it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be new. You made it yourself. Nice. I, I just, it's, it's amazing how this has uh, progressed. Um, someone mentioned that one of your props is featured on Jimmy Kimmel. I didn't see the clip myself. What was that all about? Yeah, it was uh, the... Um, Giant elf on the shelf that we do. We do a life size elf on the shelf replica of that. You still have it someplace in the shelf? Yeah. That's okay. Well, there's the there's a mascot head version up here in the corner. Ah, elf on the shelf. In the premise of elf on the shelf, it's my kids love it. It's basically you can't touch it. The elf is watching what you're doing and, and reporting to Santa, and you have to move it every night after the kid falls asleep. And, well, I'm informing the one person that doesn't yes. on the planet. You have a, a clip of where it was used or seen on, on yeah, Kimmel? Yeah, Oh, sweet. Maybe you want to double later on after. Oh, that's what I'll do. So in my description of my video, I'll put an actual link. I'm assuming it's on YouTube. So you can go on the description. Well, here, just play it on there anyway, and then you can... Elf on, the, the, elf on, uh, on the shelf. It, the elf on the shelf is tearing our family apart right now. We we forget to move it almost every night. <laughs> then we have to sneak in in the morning and try to put it in. We convinced our daughter that the elf is spying on her, reporting back to Santa, so she has this little rat staring at her all night. It's a destructive force in the home. It really is. But fortunately, there's a new little sentry for children of all religions that's based on a very popular series on HBO. This holiday season, that's say it right there. to no Elf way. on the Shelf. No! What? Start an exciting new Christmas tradition with Lannister on the Bannister. Who's Lannister? <laughs> Game of Thrones, man. It's another thing that you can get into. Oh, but, I, yeah, that was a cool thing because I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, and you know he's he's a big character on there. And, uh, How did this even come to be? They contacted me. It was the Jimmy Kimmel, the the prop division, the yeah. prop master. Um, they sent me an email. I talked to him on the phone. And, I think it was back July of last year. Really? 2017. Yeah. So this was actually filmed. I had to get that done in a few weeks, and I uh, shipped it out to him. It was filmed in July, what? and then it was aired on Christmas Day. Holy out. moly! Did they say how they came across it? I don't know if they just searched it or what. I have no idea. They just they, they found me and they contacted me. And, um, Do you have a costume? Can you can someone rent this? Uh, I don't rent those ones right now, but yeah, there's a mascot version that's a wearable one, and then, like I said, there's basically it's a giant version that you just saw in there that is a prop. Gotcha. And I sent those to, I think, uh, what was it, the Hilton or something like that. Chicago has one, and there's a couple big Christmas places that have them. Really? That, yeah, I purchased those. Purchased from you? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's freaking sweet. You know what? I promised myself I wasn't going to do this, but let's let's go upstairs and, and take a tour. I, I still want to show people yeah. some of your your costumes that are available yeah, to rent. What? We have boxed Ecto One and Ecto One A. Yeah, don't touch those. <laughs> You'll get your oils from your hands. Oh, there's a Freddy guitar right here. Freddy guitar. Well, That's right. The remnants of it. So you customized a guitar. 
Right. Painted it all up. Put what copper or something mm -hmm. in there. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I sold that to a guy who this? got it signed, and he sent me that, which was pretty cool back in the day. I thought. Oh my gosh. And so then he's it was holding your guitar. His, yeah. Then Robert England actually had a contest, like some kind of Freddie, whatever it was. I don't remember. But that's I ended up I think that second place he sent me this. Because it would be your last. KC. Nice work. And a keychain and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool for me. Wow. That was one of the first things I ever did. What? Who's this? Is that me? That might be you. I don't know. I, I can't remember. Drinking our uh, peppermint schnapps in your parents' basement, hiding down there, <laughs> if you remember. Oh, hot damn, yeah. Oh, dude. Look at this. Yeah, this is like the horror section. Some of the stuff is, you know, you can rent the things that we make. And, yeah. Some superheroes here, and like, uh, you know, different mascot heads. Here, that's right there. Take the... Casey! Which way am I here? Oh. Tickle me, Casey! Tickle me! No, I'm good. <laughs> he goes, no, I'm good. Oh, so people can like that. That's, that's... Didn't you have one story? You, you told me about one horror story about... Someone renting it and then they got you got it back and it was like all blood stained or booze stained or mutt. Yeah, it? we've had a couple that were, you know, most of the time people are really good when they come back, but we've yeah. had a few that, that come wadded up in a <laughs> plastic bag. And <laughs> Rent me! SpongeBob? Dude, that's. What's your, uh, what's the number one seller or renter? Something that Elvis is always really good. That's a good Elvis costume. We have a couple of those. And oh, oh, oh. This Sergeant is, Pepper. I would probably rent the Sergeant Pepper one. But you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is the difference between going to, you know, Spirit and uh, if you want to rent one from us. It's, yeah. it's a theatrical quality stuff. It's nice, nice and clean up here. Kiss are always good. That's always a good one to rent out. Ah. So, um, Kiss so, oh, Michael cool. Jackson. Yeah. Sweet. Can I wear this? Please. <laughs> People will turn it off. Didn't you have like a professional or like a, a prop of Spider-Man? Yeah, there's a red one that I, did, that I had too. Actually, yeah, this is a really good one too. It's pretty this good. Is this nice. was made by somebody, not me, but that's one of the black spider Man's. How did you get my clothes? This is my weekend attire. Your wife's holding them. <laughs> my Wednesday attire. Oh my gosh. Every day. And then, like, this side, you know, we're into, like, uh, 70s, 50s, different decades, 20s. Oh, the, the zoot, suits. zoot suits, yes. 50s poodle skirts. And, yep. You know, we got wigs to rent as well. Wigs, yeah. And it gets down into Renaissance. And, oh. Maybe we're going to the Renaissance Festival. And do anything. You're right. Throw on one of these. There's a couple more rooms over here. More? This is like a maze up here. These are just a bunch of different accessories. Oh, and shoes. Yes. Love it. Ooh, <laughs> is that a king? That's not a king. Wow. And then these are more, you know, Disney characters, things like that. Oh. So, so Nintendo? Princess Peach, Luigi, that's neat. Chewbacca, from the holiday special. Yep. That's probably better than the holiday special <laughs> version. That was a junky one that I repainted and re-aired. Kind of, oh, really? Yeah, he's kind of matted up now, but... Nice. What are the, oh, cartoon shows. Popeye. Popeye, you know it. And I always see your kids have the best costumes every time, you know, I'm looking on Facebook and you're posting pictures around Halloween. I they try. they're like yeah. have the expert makeup and horror stuff. Yeah, it's kinda hard since I've done the Halloween store, but uh, what the heck is this thing? Uh, Shrek. That would scare the crap yeah, out of me. Yeah, we don't rent those a lot, but if you're on a budget, those are cheaper than our deluxe money. That's cheaper than that. Oh, Barney. 
Hey, where's where's that mask that yeah, I sold you? My favorite mascot of all time. <laughs> Where is that? I've never rented one. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this I sold thing. you that. Uh, years I, was, ago. I was actually, I was actually had a few beers at Mayo's <laughs> and Justin uh, took me out into the dark parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> And that was when I was first getting, I was trying to get more mascots, and he probably bought this thing too, so for $4 at a garage sale. Six. $6, yeah. Oh $100 I paid for that, and I've never run it out once, because it's just like, it looks like a, it looks like a blanket that's been used <laughs> for 25 years. And... That is hurting me. So. That is hurting me. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. And he turned the profit and bought himself a G.I. Joe figure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hey, you got me back. When I traded you like a turtle blimp for a incomplete castle. Yeah, but the market dropped out on that. Screw it. <laughs> oh my gosh. These are hilarious. It's not, that's that's that security system. <laughs> it's not so secure. You got me laughing though. I can't stop. What the heck? Clown shoes. Oh, okay. Yeah, pirates and stuff. I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff in there. This is perfect. Then we have a whole giant bathroom with stuff that we can't fit out here. So. What? Yeah, lots of stuff. Can we see? Uh, you want to see the furnace room? Yeah. Right. This is where he dismantles the bodies and gets the real props. If you ever wondered why they're so lifelike. This reminds me of a horror movie I saw. Whoa. Lots of boilers. Well, you can just stick your camera down there. Jeez. Down there. Oh, what the? Holy moly. I've never seen this room. What is this? Those are masters for the turtle suit. Oh. So these are original ones that I could make another mold from if I needed to. That's why they're so huge, because latex shrinks. Ah. So that was originally how big my sculpture was for all this stuff. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, thousands of pounds of clay. I used thousands of pounds of clay. Oh, I'm glad we went back here. This is cool to see, man. This is neat beyond neat. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly. Do people rent crisp Santas, mall yeah. Santas, come in here and rent stuff? Huh. Interesting. That's the gist of uh, the Well, wonderful. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reattach this and fix it. Just put it on my bill. <laughs> Thanks a lot, my friend, for, uh, hey, no Thanks for coming with me. and. Make sure to check him out on Facebook, the prop shop. Dot, nah, you just have to type in the prop shop yeah, on Facebook. Prop shop. You can, you can or like go it. Go to our website, thepropshopsite.com, and it has links for all that stuff. Perfect. And you guys have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for more. Make sure to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Have a wonderful day. Case, can we have a costume fashion show, please? Sure. Yes. <laughs>
prop shop mask. Thank you so much. I mean, you've been, you know, kind of doing these for a few years now. And every time I see it, I'm like, you know, I want one. Even when you made your first one years ago, I was like, oh, hook me up, hook me up. And, and finally, thank you. Thank you so much. I get to own this and scare children with it, walk around the mall with it. I am freaking ecstatic to add this to the collection. Thanks again, my friend. All right. Take care. Oh, no. Run. Hey. Baby turtle just was born. A little tap. We got a tadpole. Let's see. Oh, oh no! You got a turtle. Oh no! Chaser. <laughs> 